Valve has had an incredibly busy week with the Steam Deck. First, they've been dealing with all the issues from the release of SteamOS 3.6. So as a result, they had to issue a couple more updates to the Steam Deck that should address at least some of those problems that a lot of people have been having. Not only that, but they announced a release date for Steam Deck in Australia. Game recording came to the stable channel. The first Steam licensed controller is coming to the US and they've been improving performance for a number of games. Starting with the latest update to Steam Deck's operating system, this is SteamOS 3.6.20, which is now in the stable channel. Many people were reporting degraded performance on SteamOS 3.6.19 when it came to stable. My friend Jimmy from Deck Ready said he had worse performance on games like Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader, and even though the patch notes for this update don't call it out, it seems like performance has gone back to normal for most people. Jimmy said it fixed his issues with Rogue Trader, for example, and perusing through the Steam Deck subreddit, it does seem like most people are no longer having performance issues on SteamOS 3.6. That said, there was one bullet point in the change log that calls out performance specifically, where Valve says they improved performance in Metaphor Refantatio by up to 20%. Now, there are no more details on this, but Deck Wizard shows off some gameplay on the new update in his channel, so that's worth checking out if you're interested. Looking at his video, performance seems to be quite good with the frame rate never dipping below 30 FPS. Of course, Metaphor has been in the top five played Steam Deck game since it released, so it's good to see Valve address this game specifically, and that really is the magic of Proton and the Steam Deck in general. If Valve finds that there are optimizations that can be made for a specific game somewhere in the software stack, then Valve are willing to get in there and address those problems. Folks, do you ever feel like you don't know what you want to play next? I used to have this problem, but then I installed Deck Filter. Deck Filter is a Steam Deck companion app designed to help you quickly sort through your Steam library and wish list. It's made by real Steam Deck users, and it makes it much easier to find the next game to play based on how much time you have and what your gaming preferences are. First, you sync your Steam library and wishlist, giving you access to things like hours played, ProtonDB ratings, deck verified status, Steam reviews, and how long to be all in one place. From there, you can filter by all of that criteria to help you find games with lots of positive reviews or short games or deck verified games or just games with particular tags. It even has optimized and recommended game settings for your Steam Deck provided by Steam Deck HQ, Share Deck, and Overkill.wtf. The Steam Deck is a device for busy gamers and this app understands that. It's only five bucks and it's already saved me money because I can shop the games that I already own instead of going out and buying something new. It's available on either the iOS or Google Play Store. Check it out using my links in the description and thank you to Deck Filter for sponsoring this video. Now, like I said, Valve has been busy reacting to reports about bugs with SteamOS 3.6 and not just with performance. People have been reporting Wi-Fi issues, volume issues, not being able to boot properly. And I have to say, I don't think that Valve has really had this problem since the original release of the Steam Deck back in early 2022. The software was pretty buggy at the time, and it's been becoming more and more stable. Of course, there would be bugs in the beta and experimental channels where they should be. But by the time the updates came to the stable channel, many of the larger issues would be ironed out. That doesn't appear to be the case with SteamOS 3.6, and I do wonder what has been the cause of that. We talked about this on the Nerd Nest podcast this week, and Bill theorized that as the stable channel has in fact become more stable, that ironically, there are fewer people to report bugs on the other channels. That theory makes some sense to me, and if it's true, I think it is Valve's responsibility to invest more into their quality control process to make sure that people aren't experiencing major issues on the stable channel. On that note, back to the change log for 3620, Valve also say that they fixed an issue where the updater could repeatedly revert you to the previous OS version if certain configuration files were user modified. They also released a new Steam Deck beta client where they say they fixed a case where Wi-Fi power management settings could fail to be applied at startup. Both of those are pretty gnarly bugs, so I'm glad that they're resolved. So yeah, it appears that Valve is going to get to all of the issues that people are reporting. Here's hoping that they can improve their process in the future. 
Aside from that, we did get three big timing announcements around Steam Deck stuff. First, Game Recording is officially launched into the Stable channel. I personally have been getting some good use out of Game Recording. It has pretty cool abilities that I haven't seen on any similar Game Recording features for other platforms, like the ability to set different types of markers for different events, and the ability to easily share a clip using a QR code. Some games even support this feature natively and have special game-specific markers where they'll mark a fun in-game event. Left for Dead 2 supports this so you can easily find when you get slimed by a boomer. It's pretty cool and I'm happy to see this come to stable. Valve also finally announced the release date for the Steam Deck to Australia, that being November 19th. If you recall, they announced the Steam Deck was coming to Australia during PAX Australia, but didn't have a release date at the time. Now we know it's just a little more than a week away. The starting price is 649 Australian dollars for the 256 gigabyte LCD. The 512 gigabyte OLED sales for 899 Australian dollars and a one terabyte OLED comes out to 1049. As reported by GamingOnLinux.com, you'll be able to purchase these directly from the official Steam Deck website. The next big timing announcement is for the wireless Hori pad for Steam, which now has a US Amazon page with a release date and an updated page on the Hori website. This is set for release on December 16th. It was launched recently for the first time in Japan with no announced plans to bring this to the States, but thankfully we now know it'll be here in mid-December. While it does leave some to be desired by having subpar triggers and missing rumble altogether, the controller does have some unique upsides that you won't be able to find in other control pads. Specifically, because this is officially licensed by Valve, it is incorporated into Steam input in a way that is fully featured. That means that you can bind all four extra buttons and the gyro and Steam input without needing any additional software. It also means that you can use both the gyro and the analog triggers at the same time, which you are not able to do with most third-party controllers. Typically, those controllers have an Xbox mode that allows them to use the analog triggers, but not the gyro or a Nintendo Switch mode that allows you to use the gyro while being limited to digital trigger input. Thankfully, the DualShock and DualSense controllers give you both, not to mention rumble and trackpad, but those can get pretty expensive depending on what you're picking up. With the Hori Pad for Steam, you get all of the above and the same capacitive touch stick functionality that you can find on the deck, which I find a nice way to use gyro. I will have a full review out for this control pad in the coming weeks, so look out for that. This month, Linux continues its upward climb on Steam as reported by GamingOnLinux.com. Now, these numbers ebb and flow from month to month simply due to how these surveys are conducted, but the trend has been clear with Linux having had 1% market share back when the Steam Deck was released and over the years since climbing up to about 2%, with this month the market share being back at 2%. Perhaps we're going to see this number continue to climb as the Steam Deck gets ready to launch in Australia in just a week or so. Now, if you want some more granular information about Steam Deck owners, I would highly recommend filling out the State of Steam Deck survey by overkill.wtf. They do one of these every year, and it is now time for the 2024 survey. I got through this in less than five minutes, but it's thorough, and it asks questions that I think the data nerds are really going to want answers to. It asks you which model you have, how long you've had your Steam Deck, how you primarily use your Steam Deck, what sort of modifications you've done, what's storage level you're using and what you feel like the Steam Deck is still missing. These are all great questions and I'm really excited to see how you all answer. So what game news should you be aware of for your Steam Deck or PC in general? Well, quite a few actually, starting with the fact that Sega is getting ready to delist the Sega Mega Drive and Genesis Classics on Steam. Presumably, this is going to be to sell you a new version of their classics. I would like to point out that you can currently get the entire bundle for $30, and it includes over 50 Sega Genesis games, including the actual ROM. So you can play them however you want, even in other emulators. I partially worry that Sega will encrypt the ROMs in the new version to make it harder to extract them, so that's one reason I would recommend considering picking this up before it gets delisted, because it is currently a great way to legally add over 50 ROMs to your collection. Check it out. 
Black Mesa has a new fall 2024 public beta that specifically gives it much better Steam Deck support. Even for just Proton and Linux, their changelog is actually quite long, which goes to show how much attention they pay to Steam Deck support. They improve shaders, lighting, out of the box display settings, and they enhance compatibility overall. On the subject of Half-Life fan games, Project Borealis Prologue now has a release date of November 11th, and in fact should be out by the time you're watching this video. If you don't know, this is a fan made game that is essentially Half-Life 2 Episode 3. It's built on the story for Episode 3 straight from Mark Laidlaw. Mark wrote the stories for Half-Life 1 and 2 as well as Episode 1 and 2. Once upon a time, he released a document called Epistle 3, which was essentially a thinly veiled plot outline for Half-Life 2 Episode 3. He has since taken it down, and he also pointed out that it was only one of many potential futures because plots for games do commonly get revised during actual game development. Nonetheless, Project Borealis builds on this to finally deliver an ending to the episodic series. It's built in Unreal Engine 3, and the prologue brings us to a snow-covered Ravenholm. All right, folks, that's going to do it for this week's episode. I hope you're all having a wonderful week. Deck gang out. Goodbye.